No, I, I really can't keep my hands off of it. It's too good. What's going on, everybody? Yep, fourth night in a row of uh, technically ditching my family. So, <laughs> it is what it is. No, I'm just kidding. They're, uh, they're safe and tucked away for the night. Um, what's going on, everybody? Let me know how the sound is, both my audio and the audio playing in the background, a.k.a. the music. Um, let me know how that is. It's super addicting, yeah. Yeah, I did some more stuff off camera while, uh, while I'm waiting on you guys to let me know about the audio. Sounds fine? Perfect. Uh, so I, overnight, I, um, what's it called, soaked uh, the rails, all the rails uh, from the kit in uh, isopropyl alcohol. Um, and when I came back down, the water was okay. It wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. So they were pretty clean. Um, I, I installed these, greased them up. They're super, super smooth. So this is all set. This is technically what I was supposed to do yesterday. Um, but yeah, that was cool. Everything centered, aligned, nice and smooth. So I'm pretty happy about that. Um, then while I was waiting for the stream, because I, I couldn't make it to 9.30. I only came down here to 9.30. But while I was waiting, I, I put in some uh, some inserts. Uh, okay. I put in some... Uh, some inserts into the only thing I, it looks like we need to do today. Um, I gotta say, that's it's gotta be one of the most satisfying things to do, is put in inserts. I definitely need to make a press. Either somebody's or my own. There's a ton of them on, online. But what I was gonna say was, uh, a while ago, I printed one of these. If you guys haven't printed one of these and you do any kind of work on 3D printers or soldering or inserts, Anything like that. Print yourself one of these. Uh, you can print these two pieces in TPU. There's a different attachments you can put on here for clamping. Um, but it's just like a simple, simple vise. And I don't remember which which one in particular. Like there's there's some mods here. I think it's I put I have different gearing that uh, makes it a little bit more precise, so it moves less. Um, but yeah, like for example, uh, when soldering something. Or when doing these inserts, uh, it just—it's like the perfect, the perfect companion. Uh, you know, it's free. You can print it. Uh, it comes apart. It, it's really easy to print. Uh, this one feels so heavy. I, I printed it real dense a long time ago. Yeah, like look at that. Oops. All right, this camera. Uh, perfect for this. You know, set this down. Insert, insert, good to go. I even uh, I even had one of these in another one <laughs> when I had two of them, but I gave one to uh, my father, who well, I think just uses it as a display piece because he can't comprehend what to use this plastic thing for. But anyway, get yourself one of these. Uh, another thing I'm kind of excited about is uh, I'm putting uh, unrelated to this. Yeah, you, you got it. You got it. It's free to print. You can do it. Um, and PLA works fine. It doesn't have to be TPU. Um, I'm doing a uh, Sherpa Mini. I'm doing a, a Sherpa Mini on the uh, Super Racer. And there is a this awesome... Um, what do you call this? Duct, I guess, that sends the fan perfectly around the uh the hot end like exactly around the hot end instead of just free flowing in the box and then on the top uh you have your 3d printed sherpa mini super lightweight so that's gonna be cool and then uh, i'm gonna throw on a uh all metal heat break and uh steel nozzle and a little volcano mod with the so yeah that's another little fun project i don't know how i'm going to take care of that maybe a video i don't know will mar with the seven i really appreciate that thank you so much and i will help the channel thank you thank you very much with that cool crisp seven nice 
Good look, good looking out, good looking out. I uh, a vector, yeah, yeah. They call it something, something different on these deltas. You got to be careful with with what you're saying. Um, I have a little additive in my coffee today, and it is uh, it's accidentally strong. Anyway, this uh, there's a lot to do. There's a lot to do in this one. Uh, sitting home sick. Ah, oh, sorry, man. I hate being sick. Yeah, hopefully, man. That's like double double sickness. Watching me and being sick. That's horrible. Uh, so here's what I'm gonna try to tackle today. I would love to get everything on there. I know it's already ten. Uh, it's already almost ten ten. Uh, we already wasted ten minutes doing nothing. Uh, but that's the plan. So let's just get into it, right? Um, I pulled out all the parts. Uh, pulled out all the parts over here so that they're in front. Um, I have the machine on its padding so I don't destroy my table. Um, so yeah, if you guys want to see something closer or different, let me know. Cause sometimes I'll be like working and not paying attention on the view exactly. So just mention it in the channel, I mean channel, in the chat and I'll, I'll rearrange pretty quickly and easily. Um, so yeah, I don't think I need any more inserts in anything here. And I have the, all of these Z motors waiting. Hey, Jose. Hey Jose, you already know what's happening. You're you're aware. All right, let's just uh, let's just jump in with the with the prints, right? Love that finish. Oh, let me uh let me see what this thing is focusing on real quick. Uh, the, 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 the no auto framing image. Aha, no autofocus. We're going manual. Focus you. Yeah. Oh yeah. There we go. That's what we're talking about. How's that 4K? 4K quality. All good. I got my Kila X2s because you never regretted it. Good. Good. Yeah. They're um. They're good. They're solid machines. They're cool. Nothing wrong with some Aquilas. All right, that snaps right on there. Let me make it easier on myself and rotate this towards me. Actually, I'll do it this way so that it's a little closer to the camera. Here we go. Let's go this way. Better says, I think you need to take a break from the build series. Better on Friday night. <laughs> so let's go get this more on build. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, you know, it is what it is, man. I, I tried to stay away, but I couldn't. Um, yeah, my wife wanted to watch a show. I can't sit idle. I was like, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go now. And now we're here. All right. Let's get this going. So these are facing outward. They're M5. I love these things. Do other kits uh, have these as well, by the way? It's hard to stop in the middle. Yeah, it really is. At least I feel like with the Z-axis done, that would be a major step. Like I said, I do want to make like a video on the progress so far and just talk about it for everyone else that doesn't want to watch live uh, streams. Uh, so I figured I want like... Because you're looking at the machine, it's still so bare bones. It looks like nothing to, uh, you know, to, to to everyone else. I think I instantly put this one in wrong. I did. All right, so here we go. We're gonna practice uh, practice what we did last time. I need to remove that one, so I can just push it inward. Right? The hell, how it was. Push it up, in, up and in, down and out. Now I don't remember. There we go. 
Okay, just push on the top. Cool, good to know. Nice. All right, cool. Uh, All right, let's line these holes up. Easy. Easy. What about down there? All its neatness. I just gumble it all up. Whatever. Okay. Side. Uh, I did get the rest of the Ender 5 S1 uh, in. Um, should be interesting. Uh, I think it's going to be... a I, you know, it's priced a little high now, especially with the K1 being a thing. Um, I think it's interesting that it's still priced that much. You can even price it more than the K1 with all the things that you can attach to it. Uh, but I think it'll be cool for people that don't want to get into the high-speed XY, Core XY thing. I'm, I'm guessing there's people out there like that. So I thought it'll be interesting to check out at some point after the six other printers I have. Uh, have you seen the SKR Mini E3 V2, and do you think it would be comparable, compatible with the Kila? Yes. Uh, that is the that's the board that I was planning on using uh, for the uh, Ultimate Aquila build. Uh, there is an adapter now that that lets you use the screen. Um, before there wasn't, you had to do it yourself. Uh, this guy. Oh, I have the V3. Which one were you talking about? E3 V3 is what I have. There's an E3 V2. But yeah, they are... As long as you get the, 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 the cable that lets you use your screen. Otherwise, you have to buy their screen, which is one, cheap. Uh, but two, it's, it's, a, it's great to use their touch screen with their board. Uh, because the interface is awesome. Uh, I also have, which one is this? This is from my custom machine, SQR version 1.3. This thing has some miles on it. I've had this for ages. It's the first board I ever bought. And it will still function perfect. Uh, you'll have to look at a 0G and Hydro mod for the Ender 5. Yes, I, I have already. Um, I would love to. I would love to. It just gets really expensive. Like, those are for people that already have one. Um, so, we'll see. E2, older E3. Yeah. I wonder if that screen mod works on there as well. Alright, I'm 5 by 10 Is that what I grabbed? Yeah, I'm 5 by 10 I'm 5 by 10 That stuff needs to become wall hangers in the studio. Oh, yeah, all that stuff, yeah. Yeah, yep, yep. Yeah, like that. Well, for the back wall, I was thinking of getting one of those, uh, you know, like in my logo, the, um, what's it called, the round buoy? I don't remember the proper name for it. I was thinking of buying one of those, like a real one, and hanging it on there. Or 3D printing the logo very large, using the 400 my 400 machine i just haven't gotten the chance to do that but i will be getting back in the projects i have too many piling up <laughs> yeah yeah they do 
And then the the FPV guys put all their quads in the background too. Hey Patrick. Yeah, another night, another night. I couldn't help myself. Couldn't help myself. All right, let's keep going. All right, the rails. So I didn't grease them. I'll be greasing them after I put them on. Um, oh, wow. Okay. A ton of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We got our little adapters to line everything up. All right, will it tell me where I'm putting it? Oh, in the back. Okay, so we're putting it here. Also, I have like background noise uh, off or on rather background noise um, remover on. Let me know if it sounds funky or it's fine. Where is my focus at? There we go. All right, all right, all right. Let's roll. So it's going on the front of that piece. And uh, halfway, they're going to turn. Okay. All right. Instantly drop it the very first moment. <laughs> Who's going to cut me out of this thing when I get my head stuck in it? Man, I could imagine, well, I, just, I would just have to lay this thing down, but if this didn't have these, the little balls in there, that would be so rough. It would be such a pain in the butt. I want to slip in there, baby. There we go. There we go. <laughs> in two hours. Birthday? Completely, completely degreased. Ooh. All right, I'm just gonna align these these things. No, <laughs> nice. Oh, <laughs> I like it. Thank you for your service. <laughs> All right, so hold on. Do I have to just put it on the bottom? Does that have the touch? Let's see. I should probably read, huh? Sender rail installation. Yes, yes, yes. Sensor T nuts shown. Looks like it's just going to be sitting on the bottom. Oh, there we go. Bottom gap. Leave a small gap between the printed part and the rail. One to two millimeters is fine. One to two millimeters. Um, what can I put under there? one to two millimeters that I have on hand here. Oh, small Allen key. Yep. 
I'm gonna lay that lay that thing flat like that. Come on, camera. Flat. And then I'll move it. There we go. And I'll uh I'll be sure to get completely in the way here. Papa's here. This is the equivalent of a bunch of <laughs> dudes standing around the garage drinking beer, watching a buddy mess with his car. Hundred percent. That's that's why you know I had this conversation in the Discord um, with Hero because he was saying that like he personally doesn't like live live streams, which is cool. I get it. Uh, but for me, I get to like you know chat with some friends. Uh, meanwhile, if I was doing a video right now, it would just be me down here in silence talking to myself. Um, so this is a lot more fun. It's like just hanging out with some buddies, you know? <laughs> I do it all the time, Patrick. <laughs> Bunch of old dudes watching a young man. Okay. Easy. Easy. <laughs> Also, yes. Yes. Come watch me tinker. All right, that's. Don't mind me. <laughs> we did have the age talk. We did do it. I love these little, uh, these little rubber, uh, rubber stoppers that come on these, so that you can temporarily do your thing without dropping these these things off. Very convenient. All right, how many do we need? Eight. Eight of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, drop one. My OCD won't let me leave it there. <laughs> All right, get this in place. This guy out of there. Sitting on top of the Allen key. Get this in there. Okay. Ah! I thought they were kind of hold it. I guess not. All right, well, let me throw one in then. Let's do the middle somewhere. Okay. Wait, why are these not aligned anymore? Oh. No, that wouldn't matter. I thought I aligned these. Oh, but then I put the Allen key down there, Marty. Marty Pants. Okay. 
that should align. Let's get one into somewhere. There we go. I'm going to do a light. We should be able to remove this Allen key. All right. Boron. Haha. <laughs> I keep telling myself I can't print what what is need to I'm my I can't read. I can't read. I keep telling myself I can't print what I need to on my X2 to build the Voron. Boron, that's the best. Only thing stopping me from ordering a kit. No, you can. You can totally do it. Um my Aquila D1 uh, prints ABS perfectly. I printed all the ABS parts for the um, KP3S Pro on the Kila D1. The only reason why I chose the D1 is it has an all-metal hot end and PI sheet that you, I put glue on. So I think you have those on your machine. So you should be able to do it. Um, use a draft shield. That's a feature in Cura. Hopefully you use Cura. I don't know if other slicers have this. But it's a, basically a draft shield that gets printed outside the perimeter of your print. Keep it nice and close. Make it maybe like two millimeters away from the actual print. Um, and it kind of like keeps the, the, the draft down. Uh, and it works really well. So yeah, you could totally print a bunch of your parts uh, on your Aquila. Uh, give me a 65 Stang and I'm good. Yep. Yeah, a lot of people will say that. <laughs> Can't type on this tablet. <laughs> the better slicers. Lord! How are you? The fan master himself. Yes. Yep. PI. Direct drive. Yep. Yeah. So try a draft shield. So I do 260 on the hot end, 100 on the bed, uh, glue on the PI, uh, make the uh, first layer 0.3 millimeters just to give it a little bit of thickness. Go slow on the first layer and then you're good to go uh, for ABS. Wait, wait a minute. I have the tools. We have the technology. Oh, it was the right one. Hehehe. <laughs> Man, have I mentioned that I, I freaking love this thing? I'm to play with Fetter's poor man direct drive in my Aquila. Looks to work very well. Uh, it, it works well. It works better. First of all, thank you. Uh, it works better when you also print the lever from the Fetter Struder uh, that you can also find on my printables or Thingiverse or wherever. Um... Because I designed it around that lever and it gives you adjustment for the spring, spring tension, uh, which is very useful. Uh, because it looks like some older Aquilas uh, have um, different size springs or some newer Aquilas have different size springs. Uh, so some people have said they're having trouble with the tension. So the solution is the lever. I've also seen some people tell me that theirs is just not lining up at all 
with the filament path of their, of their stock lever. So I'm just guessing at some point the mold changed on the Aquila. It's just hard to keep up. There's a million of them. Let's go middle out. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Super ungreased and dry. But it is what it is. Alright, now we get to put on the little cap. With an M3 by 8. That's the same one. And an M3 hammerhead nut. Wow. Was yours designed with the older style? Yeah, I was making it around my... You know, the Aquilas that I have. And I have the very original Aquilas. So. Uh, yep. Yeah, Patrick, I, uh, I soaked them overnight. Uh, this morning they were... The, wa the, the water. The isopropyl wasn't that bad. Uh, I thought it was going to be worse, actually. But no, they, was, they were really clean. Uh, I, I did all of them at the same time. Um, and, uh, I greased these up real good. You can, you can hear it. Well, probably not from there, but here you can. Oh yeah, that's super dry. And, but it's, they're super smooth. Um, see, so yeah, I'll grease them up after I put all the three of them on. All right. And then is there a height of where? Okay. So the same gap. Does there need to be a gap? I don't know. I'll just make it about the same. What's going on here? Oh, there it goes. Actually, you know what? Let's make it exactly the same. We have the tools. We have the technology. I'm going to use an Allen key as a, as a measurement. There we go. Now, that's not going nowhere. Nice and smooth. Cool, I'll leave it out. Buy my Q after your second or third video on them. I think I was about to buy more expensive, less optioned Creality Ender. Um, yeah, you know, basic Enders are fine too. But yeah, the, uh, I think something at some point changed because occasionally I see uh, some negative uh, comments on the O O T B D D. I wish you didn't tell me <laughs> about the draft shield. No, nah, man, it's worth it. Print some ABS. It's super fun. Or ASA. Uh, actually, actually, I would suggest you print with ASA over ABS uh, because it, I feel like it's slightly easier to print. Um, 3D Max. Has some ASA, uh, and uh, they have bundles, and it's inexpensive. It's gonna cost you money. <laughs> You're right. See? Okay, that's done. Let's keep going. I gotta, I gotta keep catching myself so that I uh, continue working. I do have ASA, man. You know? What are you doing? <laughs> Uh, okay, so these are facing in, those are facing out. Which side are we going at? The front, front left. So we're going over here. Let's 
Let's see, Let's see in this way. Out. This way. In. And. Out. Come on, camera. There we go. Yeah, I just did a, um, a gauge pod for my buddy's uh, 91 MR2 in a fuzzy skin. Uh, and it came out really, really good. Did I not save it to my phone? That's a while. Thought I had it on my phone, I guess not. Strange. The black one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it came out just perfect. It legit looks like a part you would buy. Yep. Yeah, that's that's a typical story right there. Alright, let's move these parts out of the way. So, is there a specific one? It should be facing... The front of the machine inward, so it's this way. Okay. Okay. Guessing we're just gonna bolt that right up. Yeah. Have you ever thought about doing a, about or done a drafting design? I haven't. And I thought about doing uh, a Tinkercad one simply because I think a lot of people are really scared to design their own stuff. And, and you can make some crazy stuff in Tinkercad if you think about design that way. And Tinkercad is very, it's almost like MS Paint. You know, so I think it, it won't scare a lot of people because if I boot up Fusion, I mean, Fusion scares me. So I was thinking about doing that at some point, but no, I, I've never done it. Um, I even had a, an idea. So my LAC enclosure, um, not enclosure, but these LAC racks, they aren't, they're all separated. And I was thinking about making a, a piece that holds them together. Um with a single or two screws, essentially. Uh, I was thinking about using that as a, um, you know, a how-to on, on, on something like I need made for the house. I have a 3D printer, uh, you know, an Aquila. Let's, let's make that part. That was the idea, never did it. Yeah, some people, so it's about how you think. Like I'm a designer and 3D software, like render, not render software, but design software for 3D isn't how my mind works. But for some reason, this childish Tinkercad is. I wish it had, obviously, some features, some more powerful features. I think everyone kind of wishes that. Um, but it, I, I've been able to make so much in there. A lot of my earlier stuff was made in Tinkercad. My, I made an entire printer in, Tink in Tinkercad. Uh, I've made my earlier keyboard designs in Tinkercad, a bunch of stuff that I used to sell. Just, it just, it, it for some reason, making a, a basic object and then removing stuff from it makes a lot of sense. And I know that's how I try to make things in like Fusion, for example, as well. I still think about it the same way. But it all depends on how you think. I know that if you put an engineer, an actual engineer in the same room, we're going to make it, we're going to make the same part very differently, I think. He said the same thing about word for word about Tinkercad. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah, like I, I got my, my seven-year-old a, a thing for Tinkercad. Like you can do like a kid's account on Tinkercad. And uh, she was in there moving objects around, putting things together. She found letters in there. She started arranging stuff. 
That's that's a seven year old. You know what I mean? Open fusion and let her go in there. It's just not it's not a realistic thing. So Yeah, Kaz I think it's pretty important. Yeah, like every I think a lot of us have wanted to make something and the fact that you can like print it in your room in your basement let's just say and, and come you know come uh wake up to a print wake up to a part that you you made from nothing that's much more uh gratifying is that a word you have a lot more gratitude towards that part than a benchy that you printed overnight you know all right, where is this going? Is this going, it's going on the non-logo side. So this is on the inside of the printer, not on the inside of the door. Okay. All right, so I'm putting them in this slot. I have 130 plus designs. Yeah, I have. Yeah, I have so many that if I wanted to find something, it would take me. It would take me a long, long time. And on shape, uh, I couldn't really do. I tried. Um, I think the closest one is uh, if you guys haven't tried it yet, uh, it's Windows only. Uh, DSM Design Spark Mechanical. So right now they limited it to. Uh, where you can't import an STL, but the rest still works. So you still make parts and export STLs. You can't import them, um, which is kind of unfortunate because they just want they want you to use the paid one. Um, but that one is the closest to Tinkercad in the way you think about it because it's not um, what's it, what's the design called where you can like go back in time like Fusion is. It's not that. It's like it's direct design where you're designing that object and not like designing the idea of the object if that makes sense so that has been the closest one where i've actually been able to make some complex pieces design spark mechanical and it's free so if you have windows or you can run parallels on your mac and run windows um i would highly suggest you guys check that out uh because it's uh it was one that i was able to pick up yeah parametric yeah so it's not parametric uh like tinkercad you'd have to undo uh or ungroup or unlayer uh, in that same way and I think that was one of the reasons why I was able to pick it up obviously like right now if I wanted to make something I'm going to try to make an infusion uh, because parametric and going back in time editing something and then getting that measurement that's it's very valuable um, especially if you're making something really complicated all right next rail next rail let's do that our alignment tools. UCAD. Never heard of that one. Let's see this, this, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. This one. No. One, two, three. Okay. Jeff, you're you're an animal. That's three days in a that's uh, unbelievable. Thank you so much, man. That's uh You are a very kind very kind gentleman. That's so cool. Leon, look at that. Against your will you became <laughs> a member. <laughs> That's so cool. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> Unbelievable. I truly appreciate that. Like, seriously, that's amazing. Next level stuff. Like, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> oh, oh, there we go. 
Lord Boo, Wilmar, Michael. <laughs> wow. That is so cool. I think uh, I think there's kind of like a, a a line for memberships. If you're here, uh, first come first serve type of thing. So cool. Patrick, are you talking about my channel? And. Oh, a chat engagement? Oh, that's even better. Oh, also, I got distracted. I need to. I need to align these. Sorry, I'm not talking at the moment because I'm trying to trying to focus on this task at hand here. here oh here we go I, just, I can't uh can't see so skipping that goes up that goes here there we go now we're doing stuff that's smart there we go okay Wow, Will! I looked away for a second. There's probably not even enough people in the <laughs> in the live uh, to be able to even receive those. <laughs> that is so cool. Thank you guys. Appreciate that. Yeah, start watching August. Two minutes, years, and then Discord. Two years. How's that autocorrect? <laughs> yeah, Hulk smash stupid tablet. <laughs> Lots of those memberships flying around. Great to see. Yeah, it's super cool. I too blame Fed for getting me down the 3D rabbit hole. <laughs> oh yeah, the use the kilos. That was cool. Yeah, I gave those away. Yeah, I gave both of those away. Yeah, it's super, super cool. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I wonder I wonder how that works. Like Someone has to come in that's not a member and then say something, I guess. Oh, there we go. Chris. <laughs> Congrats, Chris. So cool. Thank you, Will. Appreciate that. Also, if you guys message me on Discord, by the way, and your name's different than YouTube on here, I, it takes me like a second to connect the dots. So like... I'm not trying to be rude by any means necessary. Like my memory plus that fact that you know names don't always align. Just uh, you know, don't please do not take that personal, please. And I found that in, in Discord, I can right click on the username and uh, change uh, like add a note. So I can add the, your real name or whatever name I know you by in it, which helps me tremendously. Uh-oh. Why 
Why is that one not aligning? There we go. I should have done it from here all along. Also, I have power tools. Dang it. And of course, I left these all the way over here. Nice. With the hot ends, yes. <laughs> yeah, the Hodo. I do always forget it. And then I instantly regret it when I remember it. Because it's just a total beast. Alright, I think I got them all in there. Super smooth. I have an extra. Let's put that back. Alright, and then I need to tighten them. Center out. Bang. Alright, and then do I need to put... Oh yeah, there's like a little cap up there, right? I bet that's next. It's gonna be this and that. Let's see. Oh yeah. I picked the name... Aquila Disciple. Nice. <laughs> It's a good machine. Uh, Giovanni, how long does it how long does it normally take to build a Voron? Assuming you have all the parts on hand. Um, I don't know. It's my first one, so I'm four days in. Well, four nights, about what two hours or so each, a little less on some. Uh, I mean, am I halfway? Probably not even. It's gonna take a while. I'm sure some some members. Uh, that are in in the chat right now i'll tell you 10 to 15 yeah i mean i'm also talking so it's not like the, it's not the best example like if you're just putting on music in your house and you print this it'll probably be faster oh giorgio oh the last name i see i had a buddy named georgi are you georgio or giorgio Oh, this is a tight squeeze up there. But you can't see. Did I miss? I think I missed. Unscrew. Screw. There we go. Puppy down a little bit. There we go. Okay. Voila! Alright, one more of those. Where are we at? Almost 11? 
This Voron build gets me excited like building custom PC does. True. Uh, yeah, I have a, a custom PC right around the other side of this room over there, waiting for that Diablo 4 to drop. Uh, I've built a few. It's a small ITX case with... Uh, what do I have? A 3070, I think? Or did I go for it? I don't remember anymore if it's the new one. I think 37. Thanks for the help in the Discord. It's great to find people that are happy to help. Awesome. That's the best. Good to hear you got the help. Good to hear. Okay. Next. Alright. Now we're on this side. Everyone Discord has been great. That's also good to hear. We had a few... A few people that weren't happy with the Discord, but I have we haven't had that in a long time. I think the atmosphere in there is so friendly. I love it. I and I you know I really my, one of my favorite parts is seeing all the stuff that you guys are making. So if you're working on something cool, definitely share it. If you're building a cool thing, if if you're doing a cool setup in your room. Uh, that's another video that I actually wanted to do is kind of just showcase our community because I know I know people have channels but they don't necessarily nah, actually the majority of people I feel like they have channels to do with discord now um, I don't know maybe I'm biased but I think ours is pretty cool hello ITX yeah you gotta you gotta have ITX Yeah, ITX uh, just makes a lot of sense. Why would you want to take up a bunch of space on your desk, you know? Oh, we got somebody in the Discord messaging me. Let's see. Ah, you already sent it. Nice, sick. Yeah, that looks good. What cooler is that? One of the things uh, I kind of started with outside of making custom keyboards, um, that was really the, the real start. Uh, but I made a, a riser for an ITX case by Inwin, the Inwin A1 Plus. Uh, I made a riser feet for it because I realized that uh, if you tilt the machine on the side, the fans get more air and you get about five degrees of cooler air whether you're water cool or not so i made these risers that snap fit that the leds of the case still glow through and it raises it by about an inch some a little more like an inch and a half uh and you get an average of about five degrees and uh, i used to sell them on like pc part ticker uh was the biggest one and on reddit uh i sold a whole heap of them uh they're all just transparent pla and i used to have this spreadsheet uh, and I used to ask every single person to get back to me with their savings. And some people had like two, but some people were like 12 degrees uh, cooler. And the average was right around five, six degrees of savings in temperature, which is really neat for just some risers. So I was going to suggest, I didn't, I didn't look too long at the case. Um, but if you have uh, bottom facing fans, make sure there's at least an inch underneath the case. And if not, 3D print some, some uh, feet. All right, I'm guessing the next step is going to be this one. Yep. All right. Let's get the last rail. Ooh, it's a speedy boy right here. A little violin. Wait. Wait. There it is. Meshalicious. Nice. That sounds, sounds like a, a food item. I'm not hungry, I swear. All right, let's get, let's get these suckers going. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. camera get it in there there you get to see my giant mess back there <laughs> This rack was originally supposed to be just up and coming items for the channel, but that oh, quickly overflowed under the desk, over to the side, pretty much everywhere. Let's get these aligned. Am I missing one? I think I'm missing one. Nope. I am good. Oh, since since a bunch of you uh since a bunch of you here are car guys, there's this channel on YouTube. Let me see if I can see spot it in my uh subscriptions real quick. Uh Matt's Off-Road Recovery is fun to watch. Grind Hard Plumbing uh, Co. Fun to watch. Uh, the Diesel guys are sometimes fun to watch. Uh, hold on. Still looking. I don't remember her name off the top of my head. But is this... Um, I think she used to race... Hold on. Doing too many things at once. But I do... You know, Mighty Car Mods, probably my favorite car-related channel on YouTube. Come on, where are you? Scrolling like mad. Hold on. Uh, Should be somewhere here. It was a few days ago. I think I've commented on every single one of her videos. Basically, she goes around to different people that have made some kind of interesting project car. And they're all somewhat wild, but in all different genres of, of vehicle. Like, sometimes there'll be a, a crawler. Uh, sometimes there'll be, like, a street rod. Sometimes there'll be a, a, a crazy tuner. And uh, she just talks about the car with the owner. Uh, she drives it herself. She's a professional driver. Uh, and, you know, it's just a cool show. Uh, it doesn't have, like, a massive production. And I like it because of that. Like, it's very personable. Uh, and I'm going to find it. And I'm going to share it. Oh, here we go. It is Nicole Johnson's Detour. Uh, wait, can't I can do this? Hyundai Ionic 6 versus... Here we go. Let's go here. All right, now I can go back and see what I'm actually doing. There we go. This channel right here. This. Uh, she's a super cool host. Like, she's really good at this. Uh, and these are extremely fun. Um, yeah, as you can see, like, the cars are very different. So if you're just into cars, uh, if you're not going to be super picky about something... These are amazing. Some of these, there's two be she's she's done two Beatles, and uh, they're both amazing, uh, crazy rabbit. Oh, I guess you could say three. 
Um, yeah, like, you know, one is OEM, one is just wild, <laughs> like, the dangerous. I mean, we, we're going to, like, a tracked off-road vehicle. Like, it's just cool. And then, oh, this was a cool episode, uh, the vintage uh, Jeep. Um, just cool. And anyway, she puts her own little spin on it, like, if you give a rat's ass at all. Like, you know, like, she's dressed the part, you know what I mean, if that makes sense. It's just cool. The whole thing's cool. Super enthusiastic. I like it. You'll probably see me down in the comments of every single one of these episodes somewhere. Just, uh, that's a good one. Cletus, yep. Hoobies? Don't know that one. Yeah, Tavares, okay. I can't always, can't always get into it. Junkyard, yep. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, Cletus has some cool stuff. There's a, there's a few. Uh, who's a crazy uh, rich dude? Um, well, I say that. They're all kind of crazy rich. Uh, what's his name? The guy just doesn't care. Well, he does, but he does a lot of wild car tests, product tests. Um, hey, my, my memory's broken. Jerry Rig, yep. That is a cool uh, build, actually. I've been following that. And, and the guy that's been helping him, he has that electric car. The super electric supercar channel electric supercar channel that's another good one scotty kilmer no not scotty kilmer it sounds familiar if i saw his face i'm a visual person if i saw his face i'd know but all right back to this what time are we at what time are we at 11 okay all right i think i aligned everything let me take a peek Close, close enough for government work. Buddy Vadim always says that. Rich, yes, Rich Rebuilds, awesome channel. Yep, following that for a while. Wonder when the other dude's gonna make it back from his crash recovery. Obviously, the Grand Tour is coming back for at least an episode. That's going to be amazing. I've been watching those guys, the um, Top Gear guys, you know, since, what, 16, 15 years old? Five, six, seven, eight. There's a bunch. There's a bunch of really cool car related channels. Yep, legit street cars is cool. Yep, I like that guy. Here we go again with the without with the toolless. You know, with all these printers coming out that are ready out of the box, this is fun. Also, I, I, I broke a machine uh, that I was reviewing. Totally my fault. Uh, I was doing the Ghost 6 by Flying Bear, which is a really affordable... Um, really affordable Core XY machine that's not saying it's fast. Um, oh, you know what I did? I gotta undo this. I forgot the spacer. Let's see if I can just undo them a little bit and then move it. I got the talk and got distracted. There we go. That wasn't too bad. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> but honestly, I think one of my favorite car channels uh, is got to be the Mighty Car Mods. The guys from Australia. They're just... Uh, 
the way that they like uh, you know bounce off each other, uh, the cars that they choose to do, uh, like just everything seems to be just well done. The fact that they both do music and video, like they come from the other backgrounds. Uh, the guy Moog makes all the music for all their their videos. Um, you know, they focus on JDM cars. I'm not necessarily huge on JDM cars, but I don't care. It's just a very, really entertaining show. Highly suggest them as well. I have grease all over my hand, apparently. Yep, yep, RC car as well, Patrick. If you want another addiction, I got one of those for you. Oh, 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 oh. Here's another one. If you guys are looking for a project and you're into RC, check this out. So, I have two kits from them, the Bamboo uh, 4x4 and the, what was that thing called? What do they call it? Let's go to shop. The Bamboo and the Landy, Landy 4x4 wagon. The buggy is unbelievable, but check this out. Check this out. This one right here. Look. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. Oh, it's it's an RC van. Check out the size of this. Hold on. You can't quite tell because everything is like scale. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, I might have to go to the other one. Also, look at the battery. Look at the design. Look how the battery... Come on, man. These guys are... This is like next, next level. Hold on, let me go back. I want to show you the size. This is an on-road version if you're into that. Hold on. Here we go. It's coming up. <laughs> guys. Look at the size of this van, so you get an understanding how big this is. It's, it's one eighth scale. How many beers we got? How many beers is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That is fourteen cans. Fourteen cans. <laughs> Okay, let me go back. Let me go back. Let me go back to this one. Look at... Can I click it? Oh, yes. Now, they also have it in the files where this line right here is a split for a pause for filament change. So you can print this in a two-tone. Um, oh, this is like... I should just stop all my printer reviews and just build this. Where am I going to put it? I have no space. <laughs> and then some people... So, hold on. Uh, let's go to Facebook. Uh, groups. Whoa! <laughs> Look at that. Um... There we go. That was quick. Uh, just to show you guys, here we go, recent media. Can I click this? Some of the ones that people are building, also, that is quite the collection. Yes. Yes. Unbelievable. Hold on. Some of the vans that people are making, 
Look, okay. Come on. So I used to, in high school, when I had my Volkswagen GTI, I was building it up a lot. And as a daily driver, I had an Astro van. First, I had an all-wheel drive Astro in green, like forest green. And then I had, after I killed that one, I bought a two-wheel drive Astro in like an olive green. Way worse. The, the all-wheel drive one was amazing. So I have like a weird soft spot for Astros and just vans in general. Uh, and this thing is just... Come on, man. This is not one of the coolest things. All right, hold on. There's a couple. Oh. And look at this. Look at this. Look at this. He's showing off. He's got a second one up there. <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh, there's a, here's the A team. So well done. So well done. Some of the some of the Beatles are amazing as well. There we go. Those guys' shocks are a little bit too long, or the springs are a little bit too stiff, but that doesn't matter. Like it's just what a model, what a design. It's incredible. Uh, they even have like kids stuff like this. Like well, not even. There's one like smaller kids model rescuer. Hold on a little bit more, and then I'll go back to go back to the thing we came here. This is the interior. Yeah. In wood filament. Come on. Oh, look at this guy. Yes. Thick. Are we even building a Voron right now? Like, look what I'm doing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I, I freaking love it. All right, that's it. Anyone else got a quick one? Oh, nice. Without the roof, it's like the mix of the street one. Nice wheel choice. Amazing. Anyway. Two thousand five, two fifty. Quigley, those are cool with the roof. The fact that you just used bad to the bone while talking about an old van. Approved. <laughs> All right. So those rails are sliding super, super smooth. Wow, it's already 11.21. It's going to be a late one, I think, but I'm uh, determined. Ah! Bam. Cool. Ah, OCD. I just caught myself arranging these these keys. Ah. Hate it. I hate it and I, I can't even control it anymore. Alright, let's keep going. Ooh. Z joint. We're on to the next, huh? Alright, let's get this guy out of here. Also, that means that I should probably grease everything pretty soon. But before we attach these. Alright, let's see, does it matter which one? Uh, let me go here real quick. Make sure. Make sure the focus is working. 
Yeah, there we go. Cool. All right, and then back here. All right. Okay, let's see what we need. M5 nut. I think we need two of these. Click. Gotta love it when it's when the fitment's like that. That's cool. Oh. Alright. And then M3 by 6. Which ones are those? That's 8. Ooh, we get to open another package, huh? M4 by 6 and M3 by 6. These are M4s and we need M3 by 6. Six of them. Oh, three, like, the nuts. One, two, three. One, two. Yeah, right, because there's a, there's a back piece, right? This one? Oh, yeah. Yep, yeah, you're right. Ready? Alright. I wonder why... What's the point of having that open like that? Just so you could see it from the bottom or exchange it or move it if you need to or something? And there's just threads into the plastic? Yeah. Okay. Seems unlike the rest. We're talking about having a 3070. Have you tried playing NVIDIA's new video upscaling feature with the graphics cards for YouTube and stuff? Uh, no. I, I you know, I, I use it for streaming, uh, like streaming a game to my Mac, for example. So I do that a lot. Um, and it works extremely well. And I have a, a handheld that I use called a Retroid uh, Pocket 3. And I also use that uh, feature, but it's i don't i don't really use that pc for much else honestly so no i haven't really done any game related stuff looks like i have to drill these out just a bit this was a bad design i made this little thing a while ago to hold these horrible design they're very hard to get out the lead screw nut goes through there and bolts in ah oh that's what it's for it's for the lead screw i thought it was for one of those um one of those uh hem joints heim joints all right just a little bit let the bolt do the rest now there it is there it is there it is brother
It's called Super Resolution. It upscales video content that you watch online. So it'll take 720 and upscale to 1080, etc. Super awesome. Wow, that's cool. I had no idea. I like that. Yeah, I've definitely always preferred NVIDIA cards for features like that um, and AMD CPUs because uh, you just can't beat them for their price. Obviously, you can beat them in general, but the price. Uh, what do I have? I have a 5600X, I think. What's happening here? Why is this, uh, I think this bolt is, uh, has a larger opening than the others. Let's get rid of that right away before it causes an issue. Trash. I have more. The 600X 3D. Is that the one that's, like, more gaming, uh, specific? I remember when I was buying one, I guess a little over a year now, when I was doing an upgrade to everything. I had a 3600X, and I went to the 5 Series, and then I had a, a 2070, and I went to a 3070. And then I also went from 16 gigs of RAM to 32, even though it's unnecessary. Uh... But, you know, RGBs, you know. Cool. Looking good. All right, what's next? Oh, yeah. All right, let me get that out. <laughs> All right, how do these go in? I guess this doesn't matter. I'm assuming this goes up. The longer longer side goes up and it's this way. Yeah, it's got to be that way. Hard to tell. Yeah, it wouldn't be this way, right? Jeff, I need an adult. Uh, does this go up into it like this? Or downward? Also... There is, uh, there's some more stuff in here. This. First of all, rubber feet. This. These guys. Have you tried the Wobble X on the ball screws? I haven't. Um. Yeah, there was there was like a whole shoulder up. Okay, Patrick, say it, man. So there's also these uh, in the kit. Uh, these feel like either nylon or um, Durlin. Yeah, it's uh, Durlin. Is that how you say it? Yeah, should I use these? I've got a long tube on top. The important part is where you screw it in. The lead screw nut should be snug in the Z direction. But have a bit of play in the X, Y direction. Okay. 
Um, what about these guys? Should I throw these in? Probably unnecessary. Since they don't have their own instructions. No, no anti bad, okay. Alright, I'll save them for something else. Yeah, they give you three. Mine has brass. It's cool that they give these to you. I've actually never installed them on a machine. My, uh, my Kaiwu has them, but I never put them on myself. You can take the Durlin nut if you want. It'll run smoother and require less than no regreasing. Um, what about wear? I mean, if I'm going to use this part, I might as well put the whole thing on, right? There's no downside. Right? Like, there's no downside to these. Only upside. What would be what would be a downside um, of running one of these? 3,000 hours on Durlin Nuts. Wow. Like I said, I've never used them, so I don't know. But that's... I believe you. Binding on Z-Travel, maybe? So you're saying just pop these in. Um, and upward that way so they're flat right Nice. Okay. Yeah, I think we'll do that. All right. Yeah, I mean, these are louder. They have a little bit of play, which is okay. Uh, this feels very purposeful. Yeah, I mean, that's it feels better on here. And smooth. All right, that's what we're doing. We're doing these. Thank you, everybody. All right, let me take them all out because we're going to need them. Away you go. Away you go. Away. What is this for? What is this for? What does it say this is? Is it a belt tensioner? SSR? What's that? What's SSR mean? Solid state relay. Oh. Okay. Oh, for the bottom. Okay. Thank you. Everything is nice and labeled in there. So good. Okay, cool. Ooh, ah. Ooh, that's so strong. Jeez. <clears throat> Thank you. 
I have an AC bed, which will heat up fast. Cool. I'd like that. Woo! All right. Here we go. We're going smooth. We need M3 by 12. M3 by 12. These guys, oh, there's a lot. 70 of them. Looks like we're going in this direction. Oh, am I doing the wrong side? I guess it doesn't matter. So this is this side. And this side. Come on. Come on, fingers. There we go. Alright, and then we need M3... No! M3 lock nuts. Alright, alright. These are regular. And I need lock nuts. Cool. Which way, which way, which way? This way. I'm apparently doing the wrong one by accident, but that's okay. As in the wrong side. Come on, fingers. Sorry, guys, I know you can't see anything, but I just want to get a couple threads started. But I can't. Come on, I've dropped them into every crevice. <laughs> Come on. There we go. Got one. There we go. Okay. Did you make the decision if you'll be doing the inverted electronics? Yeah, I'm not going to do it. I looked I looked closer. Uh, I love it. I think it's cool. Uh, but I'm going to keep it stock. I'm going to keep it stock so that the series is uh, is stock. I know I'm already doing the hot end. Uh, but I feel like that one's really similar. And yeah, the electronic, the flipping the electronics looks cool. But I might redo them at some point anyway. Um... And it's still not too late. Like I can still, I can still change my mind. Um, but yeah, the inverted electronics looked really cool. All right, so I'm gonna tighten these down and then back them off just a little bit. That pinched my skin. No big deal. All right, and then let's back them off just just the hair. It's not enough. I mean, it doesn't budge in there anyway.
Oh, who should I go? I don't want to go too... Oh, I'm not even in the, in the shot. Sorry, guys. Oops. Wrong one. I mean, that's probably... Probably too loose. Did you make this... Oh, uh, I have a tap kit for the build of stock. So this problem's less changing to consider. Yeah. The yeah, tap sounds cool, too. Snug and back out half a turn or full turn. Yeah, I mean, look, I can, uh, I can spin them pretty much. And this isn't too loose. And it moves. Just the hair. See that? So that's probably where it needs to be. Hey, Paulo. Good morning. Just going to give it just a little bit more snug than that. Okay, we got... Give me the light. The light. There we go. We got side to side. But almost no play at all up and down. All right. That's good. Let me make the other one. Ooh, back, yeah. All right, let me do the other one real quick. Might as well. Get these started a little bit. Then let them three not do the rest. I mean, bolt. Is there anyone that just has one Voron? My favorite part about tap is directly probing the bed. Yeah, that's that's good. You don't have to worry about Z offset. Yeah, not worrying about Z offset is the best. Uh, but directly probably though, while hot also has potential to mar right all right yeah i mean it sounds like clicky or i guess whatever it's called cam getting that like like the like the um like the super racer does like getting a switch and moving the switch is nice but you do still have to do z offset where yeah, I mean, I, I could see, I could see why that's cool. I'm, I'm gonna do Beacon eventually. Uh, that should be shipping at some point. Uh, I know, I know, uh, it's not for everybody. Whoops, I know it's not for everybody, but uh, the speed in which it probes is what I I'm baffled by, um, and that's the part that gets me excited about it. So I wanna, I wanna do a mesh. Beacon, Lord Boo, yeah, Beacon, you did it. You did that, by the way. You cost me, you cost me whatever it was, eighty-seven dollars, whatever it ended up being. Um. Oh, we have another one of these M3s that's too big. Let's see if I can tighten it anyway. Yep. Well, if I ever need to take this one out, I'll probably be drilling it out. Yeah, I think if I do another one, um, like if I if I get another kit, or uh, if Tradoon or Sibor or Cyborg decides to message me back, uh, I would love to do the smaller machine. Um, clicky on the switch wire. Yeah, switch wire is cool. Always wanted to do it, but it seems too expensive in my opinion. Like it's a fun project if you have one machine, but I feel like for that amount of money and time investment, just build a separate machine. Like, you know what I mean? Obviously, it's a, it's awesome and super fun. I'm not knocking it. I'm just saying that's just my, my uh, opinion based on nothing. I feel like it's better than my Super Pinda. Yeah, yeah, I would think, I would think it is, right? I would think it is. 
Have you had any problems with it? With the beacon? And the switch wire, nice. Yep, yeah, I saw. Well, here's the question: Do you use it? Like, I know you, I know you, because you like building clearly, because you have a ton of these. Um, but like, do you use that machine over other ones? Obviously, if you had one or two machines, you'd be using that thing all day. Oh, okay. But, like, if you have other machines, like other Vorons, even. Um, you, you see what I'm saying? I wish I had one of these little 8 mil. I guess I do. Wait a minute. No, this is not 8. That's 6. I don't have that screwdriver down here. It's in my garage. The Klein. The Klein driver. Kind of my go-to, really. Well, that's what I wanted to know. Let's see. Nope. So I'm gonna do a little bit. Do have any side to side play? Not enough. up on so loose this is loose this one just the hair too loose now Ah, all right, gotta be this one. Okay, so this is a little too loose. I want to get these right so I don't have to do it later. Side to side play, and no movement. I'm gonna give this one another quarter. There we go. Okay. Yep. Cool. I'm happy with that. The setting Z offset during setup was an issue, really, but I live adjust it, and it's been great. Preheat, and before I know it, it's done scanning and printing, and I only have to wait for probing and bed tilt. Right. Beacons accurate and fast. Yeah, Z offset is gonna be interesting. I'll obviously have to ask you for some aid when when that's when that's time for that. Okay, uh, let's keep going. Wow, it's already almost twelve. It's crazy. Time flies when you're having fun. All right, so we got both of these. Uh huh. All right, then I gotta grease everything. 
by nut just clicks right in there like it's nothing. Okay. So, okay, this one's brainless. It's got two. Still screw from the top. Okay. Come on. There we go. Now I gotta find a way to hold them. Get back in there. Get back in there. You know what I could have been using this whole time? No way. <laughs> Come on. Wow, that would have been absolute time time saver. That's hilarious. Let's undo this one by just a bit. All right, we got wiggle room. Just the hair too much. Good. Let's do just a little quarter turn over here. Too much? Of course. There we go. Okay. No play up and down. And just some side to side. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you just got to get them perfect, you know. Plus, it's it's on the it's going up against the 3D print, so there's always that little bit of getting that correct, you know. But I should be able to reach that with an Allen key. Okay, later. All right, cool. I feel like this is a big big step that took a while. All right, M3 by 12s, that's all gonna be these. Okay, uh, grease, grease time. Grease time. So let me clean this up. Oh, right. I need uh, I need a small screwdriver. So I'll do this the same way I did the other ones. I took off, um, taking off the little dust cover. And they're nice because they retain the little, um, they retain the little, um, what are they called? Bolts, which is cool. And it leaves just enough gap to get grease inside. There we go. Yay. 
Yeah. The grease tube. All right, just a couple of dabs. All the way up, and then get a little schmear going on the sides. We greasing. These these things are bone 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 dry from soaking. There we go. Okay. And I will be monitoring said grease. <laughs> Look it. <laughs> Yum. Snozberries taste like snozberries. All right, let's go. Oh, yeah, you can hear the difference in tone. Obviously, you guys might not be able to, but you can hear the difference. Okay, let's push that in. Yeah, nice. All right, let's come over here and do it. Also, I just got some on my shirt. Grease Monkey. That's the name of my game. Uh, I finished, for those that are following along with that, uh, I, I finished the all the art for Grease Monkey Garage. Uh, so that is going into production uh, in um, Q4 of this year. So my third my third board game will be published. Uh, it's going to be published in Germany with a German version and an English version. And then um, if anyone else, uh, if any other companies will be interested in picking it up... Um, the publisher will handle that and uh because they're a translator help they will translate the game into whichever language so should be cool but yeah it's it's a real you know real uh you're you're basically a manager at a busy car shop where you manage cars that are coming in and you walk go around the shop getting parts uh and then if you fix the cars in time uh, when you give them back you get victory points so the whole point is like to become the most uh, uh, you be, to become employee of the month. You get like a little plaque. Now uh, you sign your name on. Uh, be cool. All right, I'll put it up here so that I can trap as much grease inside as possible yep yeah kind of like that yeah, in a way yeah and the unique part of the board game is that well, I call it I used to call it a shared worker placement game um, because since you're a manager uh, and not the actual employee, uh, you have to manage the, the workers. And when you're moving them around, they move around for everyone. So when it's when you're done your turn, your shift is over, and the other players have to take over where you left off, but they're trying to fix their own car so that they get the employee of the month plaque. So you're, you're trying to put workers in areas where you might you know make someone else, another manager, stumble. Uh, so that you yourself can get the better cars and the better parts, um, which makes a nice little game mechanic.
All right, cool. Greased. We greased up in here. Perfect. Nice. Love it. I gotta clean as I go. I gotta clean as I go, or else I feel like I lose control. Wow, this song is wild. Okay, where are we at? Where are we at? M3 by 12, and there's four of them. Okay, one, two, three, four. Does it matter which one? It does. This one is. Not this one. That's this one. Right? Uh, what? Yeah, it's not going out, so it's gotta be this one. That looks so cool. It's just a good looking piece. I'll get a close up on it once it's on. Get it on there loose first. Oh, that one's going to have to be with an Allen key. Sweet. Oh, yeah. Feels very, uh... Like, feels like I'm actually making some kind of progress. Which is a cool feeling. Alright, four more. Yep. Ah, <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be wild. I'm really excited for that. Don't want to over tighten these since they're going into the mount of the. Well, I guess it's steel. Maybe. I don't know if the color is steel on the rail. Cool. Yes. This one actually feels a little better. This one drops, but not quite the same. It'll work in, work its way in. Next, four more. Oh, these are different. M3 by eight. These. <laughs> Dang, it got so. Not yet, man. Just wait. Just wait. 
It's very fun. Uh, do you know what your first print is going to be? It's got to be a Benchy because, uh, because of my life. Uh, as you can tell. Um, <laughs> probably going to be a Benchy. Um, I guess it might have to be a cube, depending. Because you have to calibrate first. You mean like when it's calibrated? Because that's actually something I should think about. Maybe the uh, Mark IV rocket. I don't know. I'll think about it. I'll, that's uh, that's a good question. I, I haven't I haven't put much thought into that. Under ten minute Benchy, will it be possible? I'm gonna do a point six millimeter nozzle. Does that cancel me out? Because it has to be a point four, right? Or, or like, who cares? Oh, that's a nice fit right there. That's snapped on as well. The other two are going to have to be done with Allen keys. It's been interesting to watch the shift from 4mm to 6mm with the improvement of slicers. Yeah, it really has. It really, really has. Yeah, I mean, people are kind of infatuated with going as, as fast as possible, right? 1.4. I actually have some huge novels, non non revos Like, they cover, like, cheap kits. I have, I have some somewhere, but I have no interest in going that big. That's just obnoxious. What's next? 175? <laughs> On 3mm filament? What if that ever comes back? The 3mm... On too loose. No. Cool. Yeah, this one feels similar to this first one. This one's a little bit sluggish feeling, but that'll go away, I'm sure. I try to follow the official rules the best I can, since I'm not trying for the record. Yeah, I think that's I think that's what I'll do. It that's what I'll do. Uh, I'm not gonna necessarily go for a record, just to have fun. All right, where am I at? Ooh, flipping it upside down now. I guess we're putting the feet up. Yeah, it's starting to actually look like something. Yeah, because there's no colors on the machine, you know. So it, there's nothing popping. It's just everything blends in and it looks like there isn't much there. All right, motor orientation. So this is facing into the machine. In which case, I don't think it matters which one I do. As long as it faces... Oh no, it does matter. It does matter. So let me face it the same way. Dark Knight, yeah. Stealth. Um, what was I going to call it? Smoke? Like from Mortal Kombat? Uh, Alright, so I have it facing the same way they have it. And we are going to this one. It's kind of hard to orient myself. Alright, okay, that I can see. So the one with the logo on the back. What? This. That they are illustrating this one, and this is facing the opposite of the logo, so it's going into the machine this way. Okay, that's on, and actually, 
before I do anything else here, let me put it all the way down. That's all the way down. And I'm gonna grease that. So that I don't forget later. And actually, let's put the other ones on too. Ninja. Noob Cybot! Yes! That's a lovely sound. That classic. Hey, you didn't you never grease this thing on your Aquila before? And <laughs> you start it. Come on, everyone's done that. Down all the way. Down all the way. Last one. All right, this one I got to pay attention to which way this one's going. And then these are M3 by 12s. Let me take them out so I don't forget. Apply lubricant. I will. All right, that's facing in. And this one just faces straight out, okay? That makes that easy. Man, these Durlin uh, pieces are so, so smooth. They go in and just, it's silent. I've never, never had them. What a shame. All right, and that is also M3 by 12, so that makes that easy. One, two, three, four. All right, let's, uh, let's put them up. And then we'll grease them. Let's do loose. For the reveal video or whatever, I'll have to, I'll have to get my uh, my hookah out for smoke. I don't remember how old we were, but at some point my wife bought me a hookah a long, long, long time ago. And I remember I printed a, on the Aries. I printed the rainbow dice tower. Where is that? Did I give it to my daughter? There's a rainbow dice tower somewhere. I guess my daughter has it. Um, oh, right, it's it's over there on the shelf. Uh, and I wanted to take some photos of it, which they have on their website, Voron, uh, Voron. Vox Lab has that photo on the Aries page in the bottom. Um, and uh, I wanted to, I wanted to have an effect where there's smoke in the shot. Because it's like, a, it's this like fantasy, fantasy style dice tower. And when I went to do it, I needed so much of it to show up in the photo that I got extremely lightheaded <laughs> and almost ended up fainting <laughs> alone down here in my basement. <laughs> it was hilarious. Um, and uh, since then, because I was in some kind of strange state of oxygen deprivation, I... Uh, I lost one of the gaskets uh, for for one of the pieces on the hookah. So that's actually something I'll have to 3D print. I'll have to model it and uh, 3D print a rubber grommet gasket piece. So I'm definitely not going to buy one. What's going on here? There it is.
Grease, grease, grease. I keep touching grease. Yeah, cool. Four more. Four more. What time we got? Twelve twenty. Hope you guys appreciate the dedication. <laughs> Dedicated to the craft. Voron building into the night. Another thing I don't remember seeing is uh, if there's LEDs included. Hopefully there is. I would think there is. My chance of actual blood, sweat, and tears going on the build. Yes. Very high chance. All right. Don't need too much because of the the Durlin. But we'll get some in there. All right. Get them like halfway. Yeah, somewhere here. Actually, let me like not measure, but no, nah, that's too big. All right, let's do this. Just for fun. No actual no actual reason for this whatsoever. I don't believe kits ship with LEDs unless you count NeoPixels. I do, that, that's what I'm counting, but I don't think the kit was meant for a, a stealth burner. Uh, although, I, I, now I don't know. Uh, and yeah, any LEDs, chamber lighting or anything. Did I see that in there? I don't remember. There's so many parts. And the excitement together, uh, everything's a blur. Okay. All the O came with case lights and stealth burner lights. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm going to have to check the list. All oh, right, I don't even have I don't have a reference for this point. I guess from here. Alright, now I at least know that they're halfway greased. Which is good. 
I am also halfway greased. My arms everywhere, I've touched the rails, the shirt, shoulder. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to look into LEDs as we get closer to the end of the build. Alright, looks like we just have uh, some legs left. Yeah, what are these for? What am, uh, why weren't these involved in this? Oh, this part go these these go onto the actual bed, right? Yeah, they go onto the bed mount. Case mounts have a print 36 36 little slide pieces to install. Case like oh. Oh yeah, they they're well, they're in the files, but yeah. Yeah, connects better. Okay, so I'm gonna put them back because we're not there yet. Also, what's this for? What was this tool for? M3 by 6. 3 by 6 of these little guys. I think there's a cutting jig that's not necessary for your frame. If your frame was prepped properly. Oh. Drilling guide. Oh, was it? Okay. I think it was in the stealth burner files. I don't remember where it was. Six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. There's still so much hardware. I guess there's still a ton to do. Like every time I think I'm making progress, I think about how much more is left. It hurts. All right, so got this one. This is also drilling into plastic, so I might as well help it some. Although these are much more open than the other ones, I guess, because of print orientation. Yeah, these are a lot less tight. Anyone know if uh, Voron is working on anything else? Like... What's the next thing, you know? It'll be cool to peep, peep into their minds. Also, another question I have uh, that I didn't look, uh, look up is to get a cereal just so you can get into the, the group or whatever. Uh, is there a requirement for that video? You have to be in it with your name and write the date or something like that. Yeah, I'm sure I'm sure they're exploring all kinds of stuff. Yeah, I still I still remember when when the extruder came out. I always wanted to do it and just never got the chance. Ah. New requirement is date plus Reddit username. Oh, specifically Reddit? Printing date pick of wiring bottom panel installed. Whoa. Definitely don't want to strip these out.
There it is, cool. I definitely have a love-hate relationship with uh, Reddit. I feel like there's people on there that are just uh, not very happy. Obviously, that exists everywhere. Track of Reddit names, actual database. Oh, okay. Yeah, because it would be cool to have like 3D print SOS, but I think my Reddit name is something else. Might be, might be Fuse 911, maybe. Like a name for gaming from when I was a kid. Oh, Discord names, okay. I mean, the whole thing is for bragging rights. Right? Like, the whole thing. <laughs> Now here's the thing. I have uh, I have laser engravers. Should I uh, try and engrave my serial number? Ooh, I think I stripped that out. Yep. Too much power. Way too much power. Oh, yeah. She stripped. See ya. It's one of these by sixes, right? Yeah. Night, Chris. Thanks for being on here. Thanks for watching. Hit that like on your way out. Camp is starting to get popular, yeah. In Torque We Trust, yep. Yeah, this thing is definitely overkill. Right. Although the bed should be hot anyway, right? Yeah, I wonder if there's some some mix between beacon and tap. That's like the real the real one. Like beacon oh yeah, that would be great. Beacon with tap. You do tap for Z offset, completely automated. Also, uh, uh, Lord, you in here? You, you still in here, buddy? Yeah, like that seems great. Uh, also, I stripped that one too, but I'm just gonna keep it in there. Uh, so what if you do beacon for bed mesh and tap for uh, Z offset? Isn't that the ultimate setup? It would basically go down, tap, right? And bam, you have your Z offset. And then beacon. And now you have your mesh. And then you just fly. I feel like that's the... That's the ticket, unless I'm misunderstanding something.
would work if you can get both probes to work in Clipper. Yeah, I feel like you could. Uh, yeah, 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 you could. You just name the, the process different, and you call them in order. Um, yeah, because the, the, it doesn't matter. Yeah, they would each do their own thing. And since you know what the macro is, I think that would totally work. That seems like, why haven't I, how, is that a thing? We should do that. God, my upper back is killing me from being slightly hunched over. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, I need to print one of those uh, roller things. That would be fun. I want one. TPU outside. Oh. Oh, M3s and M5s. One, two, three, four. Wow, well, it's four. Okay. All right, so let me orient it the same way they have it. This way. Also, I just realized that I was working over here the whole time for like 30 minutes, uh, and I didn't I didn't have it on the camera. Uh, what I was doing was I was installing these top caps onto the feet. I wasn't paying any attention. <laughs> I have my chat giant off to the left. I wasn't looking at the screen. Uh, so much potential of war on content going on here. Yeah. Then add the macro to the probes and print area only. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what's happening. That's what's happening. Boron tap. Yep. Boron tap with uh, um, beacon. So you, the the whole st print start would be, it warms up the bed and the probe. I mean, warms up the bed and the nozzle. It comes down one time, somewhere towards the back. And then it beacons, and it's done. It would take seconds to do both Z offset automatically and uh, mesh. It would take seconds. It would be like an under under 30 second procedure to level your bed with those two unless i'm misunderstanding something camp you mean the, the is camp the one where there's like a little button off to the side and it just goes to the back and touches for z offset is that is that what we're talking about or that's something else i don't know i don't know i don't have first hand experience all right let's see m5 is this way which way does the hole go? To the left. Okay, and then M3. M3 inward. M5 inward. And then M5. Out? No, M5 in. M3 out. And we'll reverse that here. Campus select the pro. Oh, right, right. I see. I still haven't, I still haven't uh, gotten myself extremely familiar with, with everything. But yeah, the probe's just the area. Yeah. So we're talking about three things. There's three things that have to happen, or in my head for the ultimate. For the ultimate leveling here and trident is going to do its own thing as well like the bed itself right so the three things are well four so the bed does its thing then uh we got camp is activated you only need to probe the area actually you don't need camp you don't need camp for what i'm talking about so 
Jeff Beacon is so fast that it would still be faster to do the entire bed than a selective mesh. Uh, you could obviously do the selective mesh with Beacon over in one spot, but it does it so fast. It moves at like, I don't remember what the speed was. It's like 800 millimeters per second uh, bed mesh. So it would, you would just need to probe for Z offset and then the bed mesh is so fast. So you use camp with beacon, 500. Man, that's too, too exciting, too exciting. Um, all right, I got that in there. So, oh. Oh, okay, these are, these are fancy. Which ones, okay, this is the front one this way with the hole this way aha uh -huh, I see so m3 where's them five oh that's deep in there okay Uh, I'm not going to be able to use power tools. M3 by 8. This little guy. Why'd they use the M3s? That seems weird. that loose for a second and then m5 by 10 and this is gonna have to be installed through the hole up top that's kind of a little pain in the butt but hey that aligned instantaneously with no problems Okay. Cool. Should just been on fives though. Why not? Just keep them the same. Ugh. My macro called Pam is the Rat OS version of Camp. Right, right, right. Inductive tap tap clicky. Would still need need for auto bed leveling while beacon could gather the bed mesh tap could do the bed tram z offset beacon mesh yeah 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 that oh the kila had another camp procedure really processor predecessor variable mesh chip ce snake oil xy designer oh cool yeah yeah i think the tap I'm, I'm, I'm too focused on it. Uh, tap with the bed tram and beacon mesh. Yeah, that sounds cool. I like that. This one looks like it's going there somewhere. This one uh, would be this one, which leaves this that one which means I can now spin this for easier installation Okay. 
Um, any guys familiar with uh, the Flying Bear Go 6 machine? Because uh, I was doing a review on it, and uh, I, while trying to show something, short-circuited the motherboard. <laughs> entirely my fault. Just saw ModBots. It's literally entirely my fault. Nothing to do with the printer. Um, and that's that's when I decided to do this build, because I'm waiting on a new motherboard. Um, but that machine... Seems pretty cool. It's it's basic, but I could see that being someone's first or second machine. And it has this very clear upgrade path, which is cool. Like it has it ha like for example, I did um, as a spoiler, I did a all metal hot end on it, um, and I bought a CHT. Uh, ceramic uh, block for it as well which I'm not sure I'm gonna put it on there because right now I already have another block on there that's working fine uh, but it seems like just with that modification which it, it should have come with like that's gonna be my biggest feedback is it should have come with that there's no reason not to but um, it's all enclosed it's core XY uh, it's extremely budget friendly like a very low cost technically was it 305 dollars 300 bucks like that's that's great for that machine it's a great size it, ha it has so many benefits and i don't see i don't see anybody talking about that thing either i'm onto something or i'm not realizing something about the machine but obviously i need a motherboard to print I did a single print with it in pla and then my whole point was the pla print was just to check if it's working because my I'm not interested in PLA with that machine. It's an enclosed all metal machine. Um, I'm interested in uh, printing ABS, and also it uses a Nano Robin Nano board, which has Wi-Fi, so you could use uh, B print. I don't know if you guys are familiar with it. Uh, you can use B print, which is just a, a thing someone made where you you add a UI. Uh, to the Wi-Fi, and uh, it makes it's almost like it's almost like uh, it's almost like Octoprint, like a much better looking Octoprint, already built in with no modifications to the machine. So if you're new, you don't want to do Clipper, which you can on the Nano boards very easily, uh, even UART if you wanted to, uh, just like the KP3S. Like, like I said, I think I'm either I'm onto onto something with that machine or maybe they just did bad advertising um but to me it seems like uh it seems like a wonderful wonderful beginner machine if you want core xy if that's not like intimidating because some people are intimidating by it, by it and i really appreciate that they're not saying that it's a fast printing machine just because it's core xy <laughs> But yeah, I did, uh, I started doing the Creality K1 machine, and it broke. Uh, so I had to stop. And then I decided to do the Flying Bear Go 6, and I broke it. So to redeem myself, I started this. I think it's almost bad advertisement, just to call it XY Fastword. Yeah, yeah, I, I think so. Um, yeah. So the, the closest Core XY machine is the King Rune uh, KLP1 or whatever they're calling it, but it looks like that's a bit of a disaster of a launch. Also, they, they denied me a machine, and then almost right away I started seeing people with like 300, 100 subs review it uh, before it was available to buy. Weird. 
And I really like King Rune. Nothing but respect. Okay. Um, I think we are pretty much wrapping. Uh, let's put these feet on, and then we should be good. Wait, the sides of the machine have this? Or the rear? Did I put this on the wrong one? No. No, that's correct. I printed the orientation on the wrong, like this. Oh, this is just saying so it's not the other way. Yeah, of course. It wouldn't fit the other way. The profiles shown are towards the front and rear of the printer. Yeah, this. It would be impossible to have installed some other way. I don't know, maybe I'm missing something. Alright, so M5 nut. And M5 by 16. Oh, first time using that size too. I want the X Max to be good. Yeah, me too. Me too. I think all three of these, uh, I really want to be good. The Chitty Tech machines, I think they're, they just need the little fixes and they're great. And the X Smart is really cool. The, the size of it, the compact size. Insert a credible coincidence, I think not mean. <laughs> Wait, is there an embedded... Oh, yeah, look at that. I probably should have put that in. Oh, there's nothing holding it. I see. Right, and now... Now I gotta do one of these. Oops. Oh, yeah. Cool! It's exciting. It's about to sit on its own feet. Could it be that my Hodo, the battery is finally going? I haven't charged it in so long. <laughs> Months, probably. That was the first time I felt it be weak. Probably just switch those instructions, install pucks, then install feet. What pucks? What? Oh, oh, they should. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think so. Uh, no, you can't. You couldn't do that because there's a hole for the Allen key to go in uh, to get the M5 nut. So in order to get this M5 that's on the inside right now, uh, you go through the inside of the foot to tighten it. Uh, because there's no space because of the um, stepper motor. Oh, this was supposed to do those. That's nah, fine. One at a time. Hey, is that it? Yeah, the carriage is next. Cool. Let's take a peek just for... For funsies. Oh yeah, inserts.
Lots of fun inserts. Oh, here's the M5s again. I'll have to make sure I have some sandpaper. Man, what a design. Cool, cool, cool. So what's... What's after the X? Yeah, we'll do that. That's all cool. That's going to be really fun. That's a fun thing to build right here. Leave loose. Interesting. Okay, that goes on there. All right. Oh, this is why you leave loose. No, that goes into that. Okay. Squaring the gantry. Move the gantry all the way back until it hits the A and B drive on both sides. Fully tighten all the screws. Ah, that's why you leave loose. Voron Legacy is modernized design due to the spirit of the original Voron 1.0. And then we do belts. Wow. I've never done a Core XY belts, so this should be interesting. Ooh, wow, that's going to be cool. Whoa! Wild. And what is this? Oh, wait, but shouldn't this already be installed? That'll already be in. Yeah. It's a weird illustration to not include the back, right? Oh, okay, I misunderstood that. This goes through the belt? No, it's like above the belt. Yeah. Oh, you don't... Hold on, hold on, let me go back up, let me go back up. Yeah, that part isn't on yet, right? Right, okay, that part isn't on yet, yeah. Belt's like harder than it really is, just a few things to be careful about, okay. SVO5. Which one did I do a video on? Uh, SV1 Pro. I have the 6. Oh. Oh, this is a Ender 3, I mean Ender 5 S1 clone. Full metal frame. Uh, wow, look at that wiring back there on the right. V wheels. Yeah, this is a Ender 5 clone. Uh... I really don't like the way that the beds, uh, the, and the 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 Ghost Six is like this too, although it has this metal frame that you can easily add another uh, Z uh, to. But I mean, it's really this is really inexpensive. It, I mean, I'm sure this is solid. Which part? Is that good? Which part? The V-wheels? It just, uh, you know, it's a proven design. Enders all run for years and years on them. Nothing wrong with that. But this is not a, from what I can tell, this is not a Core XY machine. This is just the Cartesian machine. Um, it looks like this is meant to severely undercut the uh, Ender 5 S1. I mean, Soval has really great uh fans on the top like everything there look it has uh auto bed leveling it's this will be fine it's very, really inexpensive you know especially if you run clipper on it considering the screen is here but you definitely don't have to it just looks like a pretty basic machine consider this an ender 3 style machine that has a box uh and if you think about it that way this with 20 bucks off that's pretty good that's pretty good. You're getting a direct drive. You're getting uh, a CR touch. Uh, you know, Soval uses, by the way, Soval uses Creality boards, like actually Creality branded boards and parts. 
Like they are literally clones. SBS6 is buggy. Once you get it to work, it's great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. They've come a long way. Yeah, I mean, this, this I feel like, is their bread and butter. This was their best idea. And I think it was timed so, so, so well with the Mark IV release. Uh, because, um, because of this extruder is a planetary gear extruder. Um... And it's quite, this is quite literally a Prusa on an extreme budget. Um, and it's a proven design by Anet, <laughs> by uh, Prusa themselves. I mean, this is, uh, and it's under, it, it undercuts them so much to the point where you can literally buy four of these. It's just, this is the play, I feel like. Uh, it is basic. You're not, you know, you're getting auto bed leveling. Uh, but look, it doesn't even have... Oh, no, it does have a PI. I thought it didn't have a PI. I mean, this is a no-brainer. Yeah, I, I have to unbox it. I gotta do that. I think after I do the Go 6, the next machine is the Snapmaker 2.0, then the SVO 6, and then I have a Mingda Magician X2. Oh, X Smart. There's so many. I, I, there's so many. Oh, how am I gonna fit projects in? I don't know. All right, so belts uh, would be after that. I'm just trying to see what the next episode will will entail. If it'll be long or short or what. Oh, and then the auto bed leveling sensor. How are these in your experience, guys? Are these okay? Like, they seem okay. Do people complain about them? Whoops. I hit something. People complain about them? Oh, and then the bed. Yeah, so I guess the next stream is just going to be the uh, X axis. Yeah, it'll have to be the X axis and the belts. Cool. That's going to be a fun one. The inductive, yeah. Yeah, like this one right here. The one that's included in this kit. I'm personally not a fan of inductive probes. I can't even tell you the last time I had great luck with it, with inductive probes. There's always been some issue with with ones that I've had, one way or another. They work, but they heat drift, and some melt by the hot end. Wow. And I don't have a sock. So yeah, I mean, I'll be I'll be swapping it out, but. Hopefully it'll work. Hopefully it'll work great out of the box, and then we can swap it out later. All right, let's flip this thing and take a look at what we got. Because it actually looks like a machine now, and I don't need this protection for the table anymore. Considering we're rubberized now. Oh yeah, super sturdy. No shaking, nothing. It's on feet. Yeah, let's 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 get this guy. See if I can get it out far enough on this cable oh yeah we're standing we're cool we got we almost have a z-axis yeah very exciting 
get it to the very edge over here. Yeah, look at that. Can I fit the whole thing on this table? We got the beats. Cool. I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> Very exciting. It's 1 a.m. <laughs> yes. The wiring. Oh, the wiring. Sneeze. <laughs> I should have done it here. Now, the thumbnails, what I'm doing for the thumbnails is since they give you the step files for the whole machine, I'm, I've been adding liter like what I'm literally doing in the thumbnail. I think it'll look cool later. I do, I do, but I can't. I'm not, I'm not going to keep going. I'm going to stop here. But, uh... Yeah, this is so cool, so fun. The fact that you you make this thing, uh, you know, with your own prints, with your own color. It's time for one to go to bed. No, thank you. Thank you for being here. Uh, appreciate you. Bussy. <laughs> Papa, hit that, th hit that thumbs... Uh, on the way out. Bless you. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Now I get it. <laughs> the delay is real. <laughs> oh, let's do... Uh... I'm being so hard on it. Seems way more fun than unboxing a bamboo and hitting print. Like I said, I'm, I'm definitely not going to hate on taking out a bamboo and hitting print. Because by the time this is even built, I could have printed a million things with a bamboo. But this is a personalized machine. This is just for me. Oh, I got it. Am I on the... Can I see myself in the screen? This is like some kind of double whammy. Oh, hold on. I can go wide angle. Oh, yeah. No, it's too wide. All right, we got a photo. Here's my view. Look how crisp we can get this. Nice. Oh, there's the under desk drawers. Yep, cool. Boron. Okay. Hey, thanks, Oscar. Yeah, yeah. Jump on, jump on, and follow the build. Definitely, uh, definitely been extremely fun, and nowhere near the end of it. <laughs> nowhere near the end of it. Did I tighten this guy? A little bit of play in there. That's because that's loose. Yeah, I must have missed one. Oh, yeah, I didn't tighten this at all. There we go. Huh. I guess I should check them all. Oh, that's tight. That's tight. That's loose. Okay, which means that M5 is loose too. Get 
get in there with a stepper motor. No, the M5's good. Okay. Hey, Matt. You're just catching the end of it. Sergeant Smoke. That's a good one. That's a good one. All right. What's the? I think that might be it, fellas and ladies. If there's any in here, cool. This is definitely a uh, really, really fun build. Uh, you know what? Let me see what this is gonna look like. Those panels with the with the accent colors. Mine's just white because you know smoke. It took a couple of minutes. Priesthood. Let's see. So that is gonna be like this. Oh yeah. Gonna be a looker. Or not, depending on what your what your tastes and opinions are. Prusa. I was pretending to, to know what that is so that I could be polite. Which uh which Prusa? Like just now or are you saying you put a Prusa together? It took a few minutes. Auto moving camera. Yeah, yeah. The camera is definitely good. Uh, I'm a huge fan of it. And I, you know, the other one, this one does it too, but it crops. It doesn't have a gimbal. That that one's gimbaled, so it's uh, like having your own cameraman. Randy. Hey, buddy. Well, not anymore. I, I literally just finished. But hey, take a look at this. Take a look. She's standing on her own. On her own feet. Bam. We got steppers. We got rails. We got lead screws. It actually has some weight to it now. Does this kit meet, you, meet your strict standards, or is it too early to tell? Uh, so far, just from unboxing alone, I am really impressed with everything that it came. Like I was saying throughout the whole time building it, uh, so far, especially when I was unboxing it, um, I expected it to be all of the parts together from like third parties. I don't know why I expected it, but that's what I expected. Uh, because I didn't do much research into it, because... I don't know. I just kind of wanted to experience it, and when I was when I realized it has their own PCBs, all the wires are crimped, they're to the right length. They give you a diagram for everything to to go really smoothly. They give you the firmware. Uh, they give you everything that you need. They give you this like a kit like this. And I know LDO is probably going to be really similar. They give you a kit like this that tells you every single thing where everything is. I mean. I'm surprised that this kit isn't more popular, and I feel like they don't have uh, a, hot, a big marketing department. Uh, and LDO has a massive marketing department. If it's not massive, they have a marketing budget that makes them seem that way. Um, and I don't have any experience with LDO stuff outside of some of their motors that I've bought. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm very happy with this kit so far. Um, yeah, hopefully that answers your question. Yes, it does meet it. Yeah, the Raspberry Pi. The fact that there's a Raspberry Pi 4, 4 gigabyte in there is crazy. Uh, but I had, I also had people say that their kit didn't have that. But that was earlier, so it depends. Because their kit was different, just in general. 
um, than this. There are some differences between the two. So it's hard to say, but when I, when you look on their site, it seems like it's included, but I just automatically assumed that it wasn't. I got myself a CB1 with an adapter uh, because I just assumed that there wasn't going to be one. Uh, so that was a surprise. Pleasant surprise. The packaging is extremely good. All the boxes have la labels. So if you're looking for some piece and you still have everything in boxes, everything is right there. It's good. The first one was a 300 by 300. That's what this is. This is a 300 by 300. Yeah, I think this is the perfect size. 350 would have maybe been better, maybe. Uh, but I don't know. The, the external dimensions of this make it very manageable. It's not, it's not that big. Um, here. It'll follow me over here. I don't want to scratch it. Oh, there you go. Bam. And there's room to spare. So the X plus outer di uh, dimensions are larger uh, than the Voron. And then the K1 will fit inside of this completely, completely engulfed. Cool. I was an educated consumer, but I needed a machine that would do big things. Yeah, this will do it. All right, it is 1.15 a.m. here. I am pooped, but this uh, this was a really, really fun build. A really big one. Yeah, the 24. Uh, really fun build. I'm super excited to continue this. Um, I, I'm, what I want to do is I want to do a video on, like I've been saying, I want to do a video to, to, to just show uh, everyone else that doesn't watch live streams what I've been working on. Uh, and kind of showcase this. Maybe that'll help pull people in to the live streams. Um, but yeah, this is really cool. All right, everybody, I'm gonna cut it off here. Uh, otherwise, I'll, I'll I'll be standing here chatting all night. Um, Cole, thank you, thank you for joining. Thanks, Randy. Everyone hit that uh, thumbs up. I'm supposed to ask, right? Everyone hit that thumbs up on your way out. I would really appreciate it. Yeah, everyone have a good night. Thank you for joining. Uh, thank you for watching. I uh, appreciate the audience. Like I said uh, before in the stream, it's much more fun to be able to talk to people that want to see this type of stuff than to make, my, make a video by myself alone down here. This is a little bit more entertaining and makes the build even more fun. So that's super cool. All right, everybody. See you later. Thank y'all. I'll catch you some other time.